This is our second van with a sliding side door. And those of you that have them probably know they sometimes can be a bit of a pain. So in this video, we'll share some tips on general maintenance, adjusting the fit, and some simple hacks for making them easier to live with. So stay with us. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips, and all the products we talk about. Most sliding doors have three points of contact, top, middle and bottom. There are two main types, top hung, the weight of the door is on the top track and the middle track with the bottom track just stabilising and guiding the door, bottom hung, the weight is on the middle and bottom track with the top track just stabilising and guiding. At each track you'll generally have roller bearings of some sort to help the door move smoothly. You can usually tell which track is taking the weight of the door due to the design of the bearings. This is an example of a bearing that supports the weight of the door, and this is one that just guides it. As you can see here, our top track only has a single roller bearing to guide the door. The middle track has a much more substantial three roller bearing, as does the bottom, giving the door a vertical support as well as guiding it laterally. So our door is bottom hung. Top hung doors can be an advantage as the top track generally keeps cleaner as dirt and dust naturally drop out of the track, so creating less wear on the loaded bearings. Bottom hung, the lower track naturally gets more dirt, trapping dust and sand, which isn't great for the bearings and generally needs more maintenance. The main thing for regular maintenance is making sure that the tracks are clear of dirt as not only does that make the door noisy and harder to slide, it will wear the bearings. There are two schools of thought, some suggest lubricating this track and others suggest not to. Personally, I go with cleaning but not lubricating. This is because the objective of the bearing is to turn, so lubricating the track would make them more likely to slip than turn. And having grease or oil on the track, in my experience, just attracts dirt and dust, making it harder to keep clean. If you do want to lubricate, which could make the door quieter in operation, I would recommend a small amount of either silicon spray or thin lithium grease, as these will tend to not attract too much dirt like a thicker grease would. One thing to avoid is standard WD-40, which can damage nylon in the bearing, causing early failure. If the bearings in your door are worn or even totally destroyed, they can be replaced. Re-replaced our lower bearing after one of the rollers totally failed. It wasn't too difficult, but an extra pair of hands supporting the door is a big help. Something that definitely needs lubricating is the catches. This I use a thin lithium WD-40 as I find it more effective and longer lasting than normal WD-40. Most doors have some sort of electrical connection for central locking or lighting. Make sure the pins continue to line up with the contacts and that both are clean. For this I use an electrical contact cleaner and that trusty toothbrush again. A problem most people will face is the door needing adjustment to seal properly, as letting heat out or rain in isn't great. Adjusting the door can be a bit of trial and error and will be slightly different by manufacturer or even model, but there are usually a number of adjustment points to experiment with. On ours, we have this top rear pin, which when loosened can be moved around and this pulls the top rear corner of the door in using this catch. the top front of the door, the roller guide can be adjusted to pull the door further in towards the frame. On the front edge of the door, we've got two pins and sockets that mate together to pull in the front edge of the door. The sockets can be adjusted to pull it closer or further away from the frame again. If your sockets are worn like this one, you can always flip it 180 degrees to give it some more life. 
by experimenting with the adjustments of each of these, we're able to make sure we get a good seal all around the door. When it comes to living with a sliding door, there are some hacks and tips we found that really help. For a lot of camper vans, having the door fully open isn't necessary, and it's helpful to have a midpoint so that it's wide enough to get in and out, but not as wide as fully open. Our van has a sprung stop at the midpoint, but it's easy to go past this, so here are different ways we've used to make that midpoint stop that can easily be removed if you want to open the door fully. The simplest first is just a tennis ball pushed into the lower track. A slightly neat option is a piece of PVC pipe pushed into the middle track. This works great on ours, but will depend on the size of the track on your van. Having an open side door can give you great views and plenty of ventilation. If you're in an area with insects, keeping them out can be a full-time job. We solved this pretty simply with a couple of magnetic patio door fly screens. We just had to sew one of them together to give a double width and these simply velcro to the frame around the door and then the magnetic closure lets us just go in and out. Any entry point to your van is a security risk. So we've used a few simple solutions to help secure our side door. When we're not in the van, we use this Malenko deadlock. You can see more about this in our dedicated installation video by clicking up at the top or on the link in the video notes. For when we are inside the van, we wanted an extra level of security other than the standard door lock. We wanted this to be simple and easy so that if we needed to remove it in an emergency, we could. This simple but strong webbing loop that we can hook over this bracket would make it very difficult for anyone to open the door from outside. So in short, keeping your sliding door maintained and adjusted along with a couple of hacks can make it a lot easier to live with. We know none of this video is rocket science, but hopefully it'll help if you are struggling with your door. If you do have any tips or hacks that you think will be useful to other people, then do please pop them in the comments and we look forward to seeing you all in our next video. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.